G'day, g'day, and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today we're joined by someone you might not have seen for a while. This is probably the biggest break, Joycey, you've had since being on a True Footy video. How are you today? Very good, thanks, Jesse, and it's great to be uh, back on the podcast. Um, I've been looking forward to this for ages, so cheers, mate. Today I wanted to get you involved over Skype, even though, as everyone knows, you're in Bunbury. Uh, because this is a bit of a different one. This is a real niche idea for a video that uh, I think, I can't remember who came up with it. It was probably you uh, back in the day. I remember like it was like two years ago we were talking about which AFL players would make good soccer players. Because I think it was like, yeah. I think I came up with the idea of like, if the AFL never existed, would Australia be really good at soccer? I think that's how yeah. this started. And then like we, that's when we sort of digressed into like, which AFL players were really would make really good soccer players based on their attributes. So yeah. in today's video, we're going to come up with a squad of 15 players each. And this is like our AFL Socceroos team picking the, uh, the 15 guys we think would represent Australia. Before we go into the actual teams, Joycey, this is a very complex sort of issue because you you're sort of like dealing with so many different variables when yeah. trying to pick a team like this, what was your like recruiting strategy? What was your philosophy when coming up with your team? I tried to pick my team based on how a player plays their AFL. So like if a player, for example, is like a left-footed wingman who is a good user, then I would think, you know, maybe a left-back um, is where that person would play in soccer, where they can, you know, um, cross a lot of balls in. So... I don't think I've taken like the physical side of it into it maybe as much as I should have because I think I was saying to you off air that, you know, most of the players that play AFL would probably be too big and too slow to make most soccer teams anyway. Yeah, so I've more done, I think, on how the style in which they play footy. What about you? Kind of similar, but I think I've probably taken account um, like the the size a little bit more. So like, for instance, okay. my centre backs and centre defensive mid, I've tried to keep to around 190 centimetres because that's like very yep. tall in soccer, as you say. And I try to pick guys that are like fast and skillful that would be um, that would be suitable for those roles. Why don't you tell us, um, first of all, I guess, what formation you've gone with? So I've gone for the pretty standard 4-3-3, Jesse. Probably my favourite formation to watch um, soccer teams play. It's pretty attacking formation, pretty well balanced, you know, good number of defenders, mids and forwards. I've done similar, or I don't know if you could technically say this is actually a 4-1-2-3, but it's basically four midfielders, uh, sorry, four defenders, three midfielders, and one of them's like a defensive midfielder, and then three at the front yeah. as well. But um, let's get into it, Joycey. Take us through your defensive line, your goalkeeper and all your defenders as well. First up in goals, I've got Harris Andrews. I actually think this is probably the easiest position in my team to pick. I think he's, everyone knows he's a great spoiler at the ball. He's really tall. He's quite lanky and athletic. I think he's pretty obvious choice, to be honest, as goalkeeper of my side. At left back, left back was a little bit of a difficult one for me. Just got, I was going through most of the left footers in the game. I've ended up actually going with a little bit of experience here, and I've gone with Isaac Smith. He's very good on the left side of his body. He's a good gut runner. I think he'd be really good going up and down that left side. And I think the experience is definitely something you want in a defender. So he's, he'd have quite a calm head, I think. First centre-back is, and this is probably where mine's going to differ with yours, with the height a little bit, I've gone for Darcy Moore. The reason I've gone for Darcy Moore, um, kind of similar to Smith actually, is that I think he's really composed. So I actually think he'd be good with the ball, which is a skill that's a lot more required in soccer from a defender than it is in AFL. My other centre-back I've chosen is the guy who I think is the most improved AFL defender in 2019, and that's Nick Haynes from GWS. Um, so this guy, he's super brave. Um, I think he's definitely the guy you'd want when the opposition is whipping crosses into your box. I think he'd be great for that like defensive header, that goal line clearance um, sort of area. So right back, I found a little bit of a difficult one. <laughs> is this the one you said? going to have to put a pause with? there because I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> So the right back, Jesse, that I've gone for is actually another GWS player, another guy who I think is really improved. This guy plays a sort of halfback 
um, running role for GWS, but he's also actually quite good for a small guy um, at interceptions and spoils, and that's Zach Williams from GWS as well. Yeah, that's very interesting. Back four, I think we went different in every position. I knew that would happen. That's the beauty of this because it's so like yeah. subjective. Um, so I'll go through my back uh, back five, actually, if you include the keeper. I went with Dylan Grimes because I felt like he was such a good stopper. Um, Alex yeah. Rance probably would have been my pick if um, if he'd been available. But uh, it was that. Or uh, Andrews is a good one. And then I considered McGovern, but I feel like McGovern probably wouldn't be that good actually moving left and right really quickly. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I feel like yeah. Grimes could actually could actually dive. Um, yeah, maybe a bit slow for off the reactions, McGovern. Yeah, that's right. It's not really a strong suit, I don't think, like, yeah. like moving laterally quickly. Uh, left back, I've gone with an Eagles boy, Louis Jetta. Um, I know he's not yeah. left-footed, but I know I don't necessarily think you always have to be left-footed to be a left back. Uh, there are some examples where they're, they're good, and he's, I guess his speed and distribution. Being a Liverpool fan of guys like Andy Robertson and Alexander Arnold, who can obviously, like, generate a lot of chances just because of their amazing ball use, that's why yeah. I've kind of gone with my uh, fullbacks um, in Jeddah and, uh, and the other one I'll get to in a second. Centre-back, yeah. I've got Elliot Yo. He's around that 190-centimetre mark. I don't think he'd be very good with the ball at his feet necessarily. He'd be so physical and so fast that I could see him being a really, really good sto- uh, like a man-on-man defender. I've yeah. gone with James Sicily at centre-back as well. He's right. a little bit shorter, 186 centimetres, yeah. but I feel yeah. like... Um, you know, can probably uh, be decent in the air as a defender. Yeah. And then also yeah. um, his, his ball playing and distribution would be really good. And then right yeah. back's an interesting one. I've gone Lockie Whitfield, actually. You could justify yeah. him being pushed further up the ground. But same thing as Jeddah. Um, he could be like Trent Alexander-Arnold and just create a million chances with his ball use as well, despite being a bit taller. Uh, on the back of that, Joyce, why don't you take us through your midfield? So midfield, I actually found the midfield was probably the hardest position. First of all... A bit like you, I've gone for a more defensive type player who's going to play maybe just behind the other two midfielders. You, I think also in soccer, this is a position that gets a lot of the ball. So you, it's kind of hard. You want them to be tough, good tackler, but also good at passing and a good leader. So I've gone for an old fella in this one. I've gone for Joel Selwood. You know, super brave as everyone knows. He'd be great at tackling. Um, he can run all day. So I think he'd be really good in this position. So my other centre mid, this guy I see as my box-to-box midfielder. So this guy is going to be all over the park. He's going to be running to defence, running forward to score goals. So he's got to be a really good gut runner. I know he's got some Italian genes in him, and I know he's a very big Juventus fan, and that's Stephen Coniglio, who's also from the GWS Giants. I just know from following him on social media, he loves his, loves his soccer. I reckon he'd have pretty good... Um, skills on the ball and again yeah could just run a mile all day you know he's good in front of the sticks can score a goal so I think he'd be a really good all-rounder player so my last midfielder uh, is probably my most unique pick I think in my side I've sort of gone for a player who I think can sit between the lines of that forward uh, midfield position I'm thinking like David Silva from Man City and that is actually Shane Edwards from Richmond I think he's super good at being a line-breaking midfielder for Richmond. I think he's a little bit underrated maybe in that Richmond side, but he's a real ticker, can score a goal, and again, he's just he'd be good on the defence. I think you could trust him to run back in layer tackle if he needed to. I like it, I like it. And uh, most especially so because, again, we've picked a completely different midfield. Um, I went with a defensive, uh, the, in the defensive midfield position, I went for Scott Pendlebury. Uh, because yeah. he, he's, again, he's quite tall and, um, you know, I could see him being quite sound defensively, but also he's another player that always just has a bit of extra time and always hits his mm. targets and stuff like that. Yeah, so I good think choice. he's actually a good option going forward. Um, Senator Mid, this is a bit of a romantic one because he's about a million years old, but I've gone with Gary Ablett Jr. I just feel like he's yes. the actual sort of bloke who could be an amazing Senator Mid because he's just so yeah. good, damn good at every sport he plays. He's like a really good mm-hmm. basketballer as well. Yeah. Um, and we all know how good Gary Ablett is, so he makes my Senator Mid position. And the other Senator Mid I went with is Steel Sidebottom, um, another sort of run all day midfielder who can use the ball really well. Um, Hard to really justify it further than that, but I feel like uh, between Pendlebury, Ablett, and Sidebottom, that's a fairly strong central midfield setup. Take us through your front th- front three. Yeah, so front three, I've gone, uh, yeah, three up top, so two wingers and a sort of traditional centre forward. So I might start off uh, with my left wing. I've gone for Michael Walters 
from Frio. Uh, maybe a bit of a romantic choice because I'm a Frio fan, but I think it's pretty justified as well. Um, another great left foot player, super silky. You know, I feel like he'd be the sort of guy, the sort of Riyad Mahrez of, uh, of your side, um, real creative attacking force, could score, get assists. And um, I think he'd be pretty flashy, probably fun to watch, like some of those Brazilian type players. For my right wing, found this a bit of a tough position to pick as well. I've actually gone for a guy who... I've seen him play with a round ball a bit, but in Gaelic football, and he's impressed me quite a bit, and that's Dane Zorko. Um, maybe not someone you'd pick as a right wing, but I think he would have the pace, and I think he's got the forward nous to to probably play that position pretty well. Last position up top, I've gone for Jordan Degoe. So it may be seen as a little bit alternative. You know, he's... He's a bit of a you know tough bull of a guy, but I think um, I'm sort of thinking along the lines of like Ibrahimovic that he could maybe bully other defenders, uh, cause a bit of havoc in in the opposition's box, and um, yeah, I think he'd be more than more than decent up there. I like it. I like it. Again, we've gone completely differently, which is cool. Um, my front three, starting with the left wing, I've done the same thing: two wingers and a striker up front. Uh, at this, at the left-wing position, I've gone Chad Wingard, and I feel like he'd be an amazing wow. left-wing, whipping the ball yep. in with his left foot, extremely fast, pretty much, uh, you know, not not super tall as well, only about 5'11", which is, I guess is kind of tall for soccer, but nonetheless, uh, I feel like he'd be a fantastic soccer player if he put his heart to it. Um, yep. On the right wing, this is a guy I, I changed at last minute because I just want some little, little magic in there. Um, maybe not the best choice, but on pure X factor, I've picked McDonald Tipping Woody. Because I feel like wow, he's yeah, a, a good choice. sick, like, Sadio Mane yeah. kind of type, like, winger. Um, and I just feel like... you chose Sadio. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm a Liverpool fan, man. <laughs> oh, right, I see. <laughs> um, and then at the <laughs> striker position, I have picked a superstar of the game. This is one... He's so tall, but he's so talented. Lance Franklin as my striker, because I feel like at two yes. metres tall nearly... He'd be um, prominent in the air. He'd be very hard to actually, you know, like stop if you're even for any centre back. But also, he, I reckon he'd be a threat from about halfway with his, his you know, how um, a much of a long sort of raking kick he is. You can see him peppering yep. the goals from a distance. So he's gone as my striker. Why don't you quickly run us through your bench? We pretty much decided like we'd go through and pick like, uh, well, at least I did this. I went four, uh, four on the bench and one from each position and then a manager. So why don't you take us through who you had on the bench? My reserve goalkeeper, I'm going to go Alex Pierce from Freo. Again, same reason I picked Harris Andrews is because I think their strengths are really um, spoiling long, lanky guys that I think would probably have the, um, have the athletic ability to dive and make saves and, you know, have quick reactions as well. So that's what I have gone for him. <laughs> Um, my defensive sub, I've gone for Brad Shepard. Um, I think he would actually also be able to play that defensive midfield role. Um, and he's proven in the AFL that he can play on tools and on um, smalls. So I think he would actually be able to fill a number of roles in the side. Probably would see him straight up being maybe a, a, a fullback. And, yeah, he's a good distributor of the ball, good experience. I think he'd be a pretty good defensive sub. So my mid-sub is the one of the guys from your team, and that's um, Steel Sidebottom. Um, yeah, he's, you know, for the reasons that you said, um, works all day. He's very highly skilled, so I think he would be able to manage with the round ball. And up front, my sub is... Another guy that was in your team, and that's Buddy Franklin, just just because he's you know he's a hero of the AFL game. Uh, he's athletic enough to probably um, yeah get some get some good headers, and I think he'd be all right with his feet as well. So that's my bench. Nice. Who's your manager? My manager, I uh, I think this is a pretty obvious choice. I've gone for Alistair Clarkson. Um, such a proven um, AFL coach. He's proven that he is mentally strong. 
um, like someone like Liverpool have in Jurgen Klopp, but he's also tactically really good, like um, uh, Mourinho or an Ancelotti, so I think he's actually a pretty obvious choice. I like that. That's a good shout. I'll run through my bench and manager. Goalkeeper, I went the same as you. I actually went Alex Pierce. Similar reason, because I thought a really good one-on-one defender would be the best candidate, and behind Grimes, I think Alex Pierce is just about the... I don't know if you'd, everyone would agree that he's necessarily the next best, but I think in WA... We, we have a bit more of a, an idea of how good he can be. So anyway, that's why I picked him. Yep. Centre mid, another Dockers boy. I actually went Walters as a centre mid, and you picked him as a left wow. winger, which is which is interesting. But I feel okay. like he could be a good sort of box to box midfielder as well, and you yeah, know, sure. like quite creative as well. Um, yep. Centre back, or at least my defensive player. I feel like this guy could play full back or centre back. I went Matt Suckling. Um, again, I'm quite biased towards the guys mm-hmm. who can kick really well, but I feel like uh, he's he's about six one, so he's not too short. Um, maybe maybe not as physical as some other centre backs, but because he can kick the ball like he can, um, I was a little yep. bit biased towards him. And then my sure. backup striker, I actually went Jack Gunston, uh, just because yep. he's such a prolific goal scorer. Not necessarily super athletic, like at least compared to like Buddy Franklin, obviously. But I mm. feel like he could just be like a goal machine striker, sort of like a Harry Kane, yeah. just like a big sort of yep. hulking um, striker. I feel like he'd be good. My manager, I went the same pretty much as you, Alistair Clarkson. Uh, like you said, it's. Um, I feel like he's one of the few coaches who could actually coach another coach. I think it was someone I was actually talking about in the middle of the year. I can't remember who it was. Some pundit said he expected Clarkson to coach another code at some point in his career. Um, oh, yeah. And I think it was just because he's the sort of guy who would pick up the game really quickly. But mm. I did briefly consider Sam Mitchell, who's never even been a head coach in the AFL, but I reckon he's of the same ilk. He could probably pick up the game tactically wow. and be a really good manager. He was my dark horse, but um, but you know I'd probably go Clarkson if I had the choice. So there you go. So, so why don't you... oh, sorry. Jesse? Sorry, let me ask you if you could bring a retired player back. I know this is a bit of a surprise, but I thought I'd shake it up. Um, if you could bring a retired player into your team, who would you who would you bring? Uh, I'm talking about retired, spot here. retired AFL, AFL player. player. Yes, into the soccer team or oh, Andrew McLeod. Peter Matera. Yes. These are like really fast and skillful guys. I mean, mm. you got you got your Judds, your Herds, your Buckleys. I don't think they necessarily translate as well as no. uh, some of these smaller, nippier guys. Probably, I'd probably well, take Peter the whole, Matera. Yeah, well, that interesting because that's the whole reason I really stayed away from like the Dangerfield, Dustin Martin, yeah. Matt Fife sort of player because I just feel like exactly. they wouldn't translate into into this sort of sport. Yeah, but some good shouts there. I think maybe Surioli's. A pretty good shout as a winger, maybe Jason Akamanis, I think as well. Um, yeah, 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 that's true. Sick, sick idea, actually. Akamanis as well. Good shout, good shout. Um, all right, Josie, why don't you run us through your eleven um, just to summarise it for the listeners or viewers, and I'll actually put a graphic up on the screen of your team as well. So why don't you just run through it? Sounds good. So my team is Harris Andrews in goal. Isaac Smith, left back. Centre back is Darcy Moore. The other centre back is Nick Haynes. And the right back is Zach Williams from GWS. My three midfielders. So my defensive midfielder is Joel Selwood. My other centre mid is Stephen Coniglio. And my last centre mid is Shane Edwards from Richmond Tigers. At left forward, I've got Michael Walters. At centre forward, Jordan Dugowie. And right wing, I've got Dane Zorko. With Alex Pierce, Brad Shepard, Steel Side Bottom, and Buddy Franklin on the bench, Clarkson in the manager's office. In the okay. manager's office. I like it. I went Grimes in goal, and my back four were Lewis Jetta, Elliot Yo, and Sicily in the centre back positions, and Lock- uh, Lockie Whitfield as the right back. In centre de- central defensive midfield, Scott Pendlebury, and he's joined by Ablett and Side Bottom as the other two central midfielders. Up front, we've got Wingard as a left winger, Tipping Woody on the right, and uh, just in front of the goals, we've got Buddy Franklin as the main striker. The bench is comprised of Alex Pierce, Michael Walters, Matty Suckling, and Jack Gunston, managed again by Alistair Clarkson. Just one final question for you, Joycey. Having a look at my team, is there anyone on there that you maybe wish you'd considered? I'm pretty happy with my team, to be honest, but oh, well, fuck you, I, then. Think, <laughs> I think a lot of... Uh, I think. Your so your three midfielders. I think I considered all of them for a position in in my team. The only one I'd probably maybe have considered is Isaac Smith into my side, maybe for Tipping Woody. 
But I'm, I'm yeah. pretty happy with that anyway. Cool, man. Well, thank you for joining us once again on the True Footy YouTube channel. Hopefully it's not as long between drinks next time. We've got the footy season coming up, and I'm sure you're excited to see all that happen. Definitely, Jesse. Can't wait to uh, see what Justin Longmuir can um, you know, do at Fremantle. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but um, we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, let's hope he can just work fucking miracles. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video on the True Footy YouTube channel. Only kidding. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. See you, guys.